Snell's law. Let us assume that um, this is a medium one and this is medium two. This is the borderline. And uh, a letter is traveling. This is the letter. It is traveling from medium one to medium two. Then this letter undergoes to some refraction. Then this is the normal one at point C. Let it be C. The angle between the incidence ray and the normal that is I. Let I be the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction that is the angle between the refracted ray and the normal that is taken as the angle of refraction. The angle of refraction and let us just let us assume that the refractive index of this medium is N1 and that of this medium is N2. The Snell's law tells that the relation between the angle of incidence and angle of refraction and the refractive indexes of two mediums N1 sin A equal to N2 sin R. Now let us derive this. To derive this Snell's law, let us assume a situation. This is a shoreline. Below the shoreline is water, and above the shoreline is the land. And here the person has fallen into the water, and and the person is screaming for help. Here is a person watching this accident, and he wants to save this girl. For that, he has to move from U to B as early as possible. For that, he has to choose a path through which he can reach the B as quickly as possible. To choose the the suitable path through which he can move from A to B within the less amount of time. See this. From A to B there are so many paths. I have taken nine points on the shoreline. A1, B is one path. A2, B is another path. A3, B is another path. Like that we have so many paths. I have taken nine parts by drawing a graph by plotting a graph between uh, time taken time taken to reach from a to b through different paths along y axis and uh, the distances from y to the corresponding points on the x axis we get this type of graph from this graph what we can say that there are two points C and D such that the time taken to reach the point B from A it takes same time. That means D and C are two points on the shoreline such that if you move through D to B or through C ADB and ACB both the paths take same time to reach the destination. Such points are taken. Now this light ray is traveling like this. This is the point of incidence. That is C is the point of incidence, and uh, this is the normal drawn at that point C. And uh, CB is the refracted ray. Now what is the angle of incidence? This is I. I is the angle of incidence, and uh, this is the angle of refraction. Here we have two right angle triangles. From this point D, draw a perpendicular onto the incidence incident ray. That is DE is perpendicular to AC. Then DEC is a right angle triangle. Similarly, if you draw a perpendicular from C onto the refracted ray DB, we get one more right angle triangle DCF. Now these two triangles are drawn here very clearly. Now let us assume that uh, time taken to travel from E to C on the land that is from E to C on the land is delta T and time taken to travel from D to F in the water D to F time taken is delta T. Here what happens is the time taken to move through the along the path A C B and A D B both the times are same. Then 
Let us compare the times taken to travel part by part. Time taken to reach from A to E and A to D both are equal. These two are equal because these two distances are equal, nearly equal. Therefore, time taken to travel on the land they are same. Okay. Next, in the water time taken to move from C to B and F to B these two are also same because these two distances are equal. So, here also times are same. The only difference that occurs in this situation is the time taken to move from E to C on the land should be equal to time taken to move from D to F in the water. So for that what I have taken is uh, time taken to move from E to C on the land is delta T time taken to move from D to F in the water is delta T. Speed of running on the land is V1 and speed of swimming in the water is V2. Then what is the distance EC and DF? What is the distance EC? EC equal to this distance equal to speed into time. Speed is V1 and time is delta T. Therefore, V1 into delta T. What is DF? Speed in the water into the time taken to travel this distance. That is V2 into delta T. From this delta T equal to EC by V1. That equal to DF by V2. From this what we can say? EC by DF equal to V1 by V2. Let it be equation number 1. Now, here we have two right angle triangles. These are drawn here clearly for our convenience. Now, this is angle of incidence I. This is angle of reflection R. Since this is the normal to the shoreline, this is normal. Therefore, this angle is 90 minus I. This is 90 minus A, therefore this must be angle I. From this, what is sin I? Sin I equal to opposite by hypotenuse, that is uh, EC divided by DC, EC by DC. Sin I equal to EC by DC from EC equal to DC sin I. Next, this is the angle of refraction and this angle and this angle are same because C and D the point D and C are very very close to each other and uh, angles of refraction are taken to be same these two angles must be same and uh, this is the normal run at the this uh, shoreline this is 90 degrees therefore this is 90 minus R then this angle must be R. Then what is sin R? Sin R equal to DF by DC. Sin R equal to DF by DC. From this DF equal to DC sin R. From equation number 1 we have EC by DF equal to V1 by V2. EC equal to DC sin I and DF equal to DC sin R. This equal to V1 by V2. And V1 by V2 equal to N2 by N1 implies n1 sin i equal to n2 sin r. That's all. This is the Snell's law.